Good morning to you. I am Mark Suddeth, and here's what's up in the tropics for Monday, the 8th of August, 2022. As we have been discussing the last day or so, we have a system out in the eastern Atlantic. I do believe it has been tagged recently as Invest Area 97L. And as Andy Hazelton here is saying in this tweet this morning, it's looking relatively healthy this morning. However, it's only the GFS and its ensembles that are developing this system really in terms of the major model guidance. It does look pretty healthy though, as Andy references, pretty good curvature overall, a decent vorticity signature with it. So we shall see what happens over the coming days. Here's what it looks like on the graphical tropical weather outlook, 20% chance over the next 48 hours and only a 40% chance over the next few days, that's uh, extended out to five days. I believe that these chances will go up. I see that this is gonna probably try to develop a little bit more than I think what people are giving it credit for. The GFS, I think, having a pretty good handle on the overall situation. We'll take a look at that closer in just a moment. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Pacific, lots of yellows out there, low probability areas of development, and then we have Tropical Storm Howard, very weak and disorganized. It's up in the cooler waters of the Eastern Pacific. And in fact, I think the East Pack is gonna to start to really calm down here. We are already seeing signs of that and it's gonna happen just as the Atlantic really starts to wake up over the next couple of weeks and beyond. All right, so the satellite animation this morning, Gulf, Caribbean, Western Atlantic, all nice and clear. Here's our system south of the Cabo Verde Islands. And as I said, Looking at some information, I think this is officially now Invest Area 97L, and uh, we'll be watching this closely as more computer models get thrown at it, more resources. That's what that Invest tag means. It's an area of investigation, so it'll be more focused on by different agencies and forecasting models and so forth to see how this evolves over the coming days. Sliding over to the west a tad, there's Howard in the Eastern Pacific, well off the Baja and a few other random areas of deeper convection in the Eastern Pacific. But as I mentioned, this basin starting to calm down just as we start to see the Atlantic begin to wake up here. One of the big reasons why it's waking up, look at the Saharan air layer, very much disrupted and shoved off more to the north and west, well north of about 20 degrees latitude now. And that's gonna allow the intertropical convergence zone and the overall main development region from Africa all the way over to the Lesser Antilles to become more favorable, not the perfect scenario, but certainly more favorable than we have seen in recent days and weeks. This is the vorticity signature. There is the energy associated with the tropical wave. It's still rather diffuse and just different chunks of energy. It has to consolidate, but the GFS thinks it will do so. And you can see that here in the animation from the 6Z. This goes out to five days. There it is. I don't even have to point it out to you. It's right there in the open Atlantic and uh, it looks like it'll sort of curl up in the intertropical convergence zone, take advantage of the heat, the energy, the moisture that's out there, and develop into our next tropical storm, which would be Danielle. We'll watch this closely. Still many, many days away from any impacts to land, if ever. No threat of that right now over the next five to seven days. Just something to watch as the hurricane season progresses towards a more busy time period. I will go over all of this and more in greater detail in my Hurricane Outlook and Discussion video a little later today. All right, thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate it. I'm Mark Suddeth. Again, this has been What's Up in the Tropics. I'll be back with more for you later today.